in the Saginaw area. I went to school in Frankenmuth and um, that's where I kind of started my passion and, and love for theater. Pitt and Balcony was the first place that I ever worked on like a big non-school production that was backstage uh, in 2004 and then volunteered here as often as I could. Um, and then I went to college and decided that I wanted to get into arts management, which is just like theater business. So I wanted to be around theaters, but I didn't necessarily want to act. Um, and I remember sitting in a meeting with all the other arts management majors and my and, and our advisor. And he had us go around the table and he said, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And I was 19 at the time. Um, he said, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And, and everyone was going around there like, oh, I'm going to be in New York and I'm going to be um, the front of house manager of, of the Steppenwolf in Chicago or whatever. Everyone had these big professional theater, like name and lights kind of dreams. And he got to me and I said, well, I want to run a theater, a community theater in Saginaw, Michigan. And he kind of stopped and he's like, what, like what? Like what are you, community theater? He's like, why? You know, when everybody's talking about you know, doing these big things and winning Tonys and that stuff. Um, and I said, because community theater is one of the most important outlets for performing arts. thing about Pitt and Balcony is that you can you can walk into any production and you can see people um, whose ages span a gap of like 50 or 60 years um, and and that is a really unique thing especially for theater um, but for lots of different entertainment venues and organizations we have recently started um, moving in the direction of, of growth and education and so we're focusing a lot of our offstage programming on um, youth and the development of, of youth in performing arts. And, um, and then we do kind of like to push the envelope with our productions. So you'll see that some of the shows that we do are shows that you're not gonna see north of Detroit um, because we have the audience for it. So that kind of, I think, is, is what our niche is. everybody and welcome to the Pitt and Balcony production of Hands of God, written by Robert Askins and directed by Todd Thomas. We thank you and all of our patrons for their support, especially our generous season sponsor, the Saginaw Community Foundation. Happy to you. We, yes. we went completely over. <laughs> We had our second installment of our of our After Dark uh, season, and that was Hand to God just this past June. And it was, I don't want to say it was a surprising success, um, but being the second time that we've done this, you don't expect to see the success that we saw after just, you know, one try uh, last year. And, and last year was great, but this year really kind of like sealed the deal that, that this is something that the Great Lakes Bay region wants to see and wants to support, and we're, we're happy to, to provide that. In the Great Lakes Bay region, we're, it's this unique situation where we're a lot of little big cities. So it's not Detroit where you've got this giant metropolis and then all of these suburbs and, that, and every suburb is kind of their own thing. Um, we are three kind of big cities. I don't know, I'm, I grew up in the country. Frankly, with us, 4,000 people in it. So. Um, so you get kind of that urban feel, but there's but the community is so much larger. There's a quote in The Great Gatsby where Daisy says, I love big parties, they're so much more intimate. Because when you're at a big party, you can find one person and you can like just talk to that one person or talk to those, those two people and you really get to have a feel of, of what they're about. 
Whereas like if you're at a small party, you're kind of like, you have to talk to everybody, right? And you don't really get, and that's what you get in the Great Lakes Bay region is like, it's this big party and we all get to kind of get to know each other and work with each other and um, share art and passion and love and talent. And I think that it's, it's unique in that way that we get kind of this combination of, of that big urban feel, but it's also really homey and we all really like each other, which is also really great. I'm Kathy Pulaski. I'm the Operations Manager at Bay City Players. We are located at 1214 Columbus Avenue and uh, we are the best gig in town. We're here over a hundred years now. We're entering season 101 and part of my responsibilities are to make sure the building isn't double booked, um, to make sure people have what they need as far as resources. We have a wonderful uh, list a wonderful group of committee chairs that take care of so many things because you can't do this alone one person can't do this and it's so much more than actors it's so much more than front of house it's so much more than tech it's everybody working together to create a really good product and that's that's the big part of my job is making sure everybody has what they need has the contacts has the materials if if you know, they need something special, or to find the person to connect with the other person and get them, they get them what they need. So we do have a consistent, well thought out, well produced product. Bay City Players is unique in that we have only three part-time paid positions, uh, the custodial staff, the office manager, and my job, the operations manager. The rest of this happens with volunteers, and it's incredible. I like the iceberg analogy where the performance is the very tip, and then you know the iceberg is this. It just is huge underneath. So it takes your board of directors, it takes your, um, your set people, your tech people, your costumers, your youth program directors, your um, your concessions, your front of house, the greeters, I don't want to leave anybody out, the ushers. There's so many people that come together to, to make the production seem seamless. And not that just the productions, we are a community theater. Daddy, Mama. Hey, Daddy, The Great Lakes Bay Theatre Network is a relatively new concept, but it's really exciting because what it has done is it's brought the uh, community theaters in our area together to kind of work as a collaboration or do more collaborating or use resources together. It's also um, created a venue for people to reach out to each other. It's, it's a nice way to find out what's going on outside of your backyard. And we're all really blessed to have wonderful theaters in our, in our own backyard, you know, Midland, Bay City, and Saginaw. And, um, and we're, each, we're each wonderful in our own way, and we're each unique in our own way, and we're each different, uh, different from each other. We have the same goal where we want everyone in the community to come and play, but to put on a really good product, to produce a good product. Um, the cool thing about players, that's where most of my experience is, is we draw people from all walks of life. You know, the mail carriers work with the lawyers and the judges, um, the doctors, the McDonald's workers, the Kentucky Fried Chicken workers. And when they come here to play, it's all, it's all for the same purpose. 
there's there's no pecking order. There's no well, you know, he's the judge and I no no no. You just come and you do and you work together. And that I think is a real, really exceptional thing about theater is everybody's welcome. Specifically, within the the community theater world, what makes um, center stage theater so unique is that, <laughs> as a person who has spent my life in theater, I have spent so much time uh, in, in small little storefront theaters, um, many many times on stages that I have built myself, and um, the ability to have a facility like this to be kind of where we can all come to to perform. Um, the center has, like center stage theater has all the same challenges that any theater does. But what but one thing that we uh, one thing that we have is that's unique to us is we have this beautiful theater, whether it's the auditorium or whether it's the little theater, we have this amazing space, you know, we have a theater that has a revolve in the middle of it. It just gives us these these fun um, creative choices that we get to to use and, and kind of just have fun with and it, it, it's interesting because it, it spurs new creative choices, it spurs new ideas, it allows us to experiment with new ways of, of presenting theater that maybe we've never um, we've never been able to do before. that come in from, from out of town, um, but we also have um, some local organizations and probably the one that we've had the longest relationship with is TMI, TMI which is also called uh, Teenage Musicals Incorporated and um, actually I think just in a couple of weeks now they have their production of Little Mermaid that's going to be opening uh, in, uh, in the auditorium. And uh, TMI is a really remarkable, uh, it's a really remarkable group because they actually work really closely with our interim theater, um, whereas where kids can come in and they can audition and they can choose whether or not they want to participate in the musical, which this, this year is The Little Mermaid, um, or they can do uh, non-musical theater, they can do a straight play, uh, which this year is David Ives' All in the Timing. So they can kind of, you know, whether it's high school kids or college kids, they can come in and they can choose which part of the discipline they want to explore during the summer months. And of course they visit each other's rehearsals and um, it was a really nice just kind of cultural exchange between uh, the various cast. It's a, 
a blessing to be only a few hours away from him. And this young elephant was born out of conversations, as all good things were, um, with a friend, a couple of friends, and we were talking about sort of the plays that we wanted to see um, and the things that we wished as actors or as directors or choreographers or singers that we wish we were able to be a part of. And as we got to talking, um, I have some experience starting a theater company actually in 2007. My brother and I started a theater company out of the Bullet Creek High School Auditorium. Um, which didn't end up working out. He moved and it was a whole thing. But uh, I have some experience with it and so I was like, let's just do it. Let's just see if there's a place that we can get a hold of that will be interested in working with us. And so I knew that Whistling Idiots had existed in Bay City. They didn't know the state of that building so I went to go find it. Um, and the Masons, as you know, are like a secret society. So they don't have any contact information. <laughs> so I found the contact information for this building and they didn't really know. So I sent them an email and Kelly Kent, who is on the board um, with the Friends of the on the temple got back to me right away and she said yeah come on in and we'd love to talk to you and work with you and um can you come up with a, a, a plan for tomorrow and i was like <laughs> um because this has so far been very conceptual um but we got together and we hammered out the details of what we'd like it to look like and we made a mission statement and got the next morning and uh got to talk with the board of the friends of the masonic temple and it turns out they had been looking for so they'd own this they'd had ownership of this building for a while and it had been kind of sitting um, because it was in limbo of, as to who was in charge of it. And so they had had the ownership for a couple of years and they'd been looking for an arts program to kind of be the host of it. And so it just happened to be great timing and we got together and hammered it out and it's been about a year. Um, we wanted to do a little bit of fundraising with some events. We did a speakeasy themed 20s party that was super fun. Um, we've done a couple cabarets. So we've done some performance based events and we're hoping to do a lot more of those also because they're really fun. But um, once we raised the funds for a play, we wanted to be sure we were fiscally solvent and ready to go. And so that, that we're ready to, ready to get started with our play. So we're so excited to be able to move forward. So it's been about a year in the making and this is our very first show. And our other goal with that is to really work with, within the community and make community ties, um, hopefully working with high schools, working with libraries, um, working with groups to try and get people in to understand the literacy behind plays. And so looking at it as an educational opportunity, um, and we hope to have a strong youth outreach as well. passion projects so if you hear people talking about oh I've always wanted to do the show but no one around here will do it that's where I come and that's where I found my niche to do the darker more intimate avant-garde shows that aren't gonna bring in a huge audience but give people the opportunities that they've been wanting for so long in the past two years I've produced two shows that have been dream shows of mine for five years um, I've given directors the opportunity to direct something they've wanted to direct for a long time. Um, I pay the actors, which is something no community theater in the area does, because um, I want to make them believe that they're a valued part of the process. Um, directors and stage managers, technical designers, that sort of thing. Um, so it's been really neat to see this huge community of artists trying to help each other thrive. You know, I've been trying to figure out what makes the Great Lakes, this area, the Great Lakes Bay region so special because it really is. I, I came here from Illinois and um, so when I came to this community, I came from a professional theater background, so I've never worked in community theater before. And one of the reasons that um, I came here is because when I came uh, to the area and started seeing theater in the area, I realized that the, the, the depth of the talent and 
just kind of the richness of the of the theater fabric like in the community was was just unusual from any other place that I had ever been. It's it's, it's really um, unusual. Yes, I know the love's like ghosts Oh, if you have seen it, but everybody talks Spirits follow where I go Oh, they sing all day and they haunt me in the night Oh, they sing all day Sing on.